guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today, we are going to play with fabric, but we are not going to use a sewing machine. I thought we'd do another little scrap project with little scraps. These canvases are 5 by 7 I picked them up at the Dollar Tree. They were a dollar for a set of two, so that was a really good deal. And I went digging through my bins, and I got some different fabric scraps. So let me show you how I made these. So a little while back, while perusing the crafting aisle at the Dollar Tree, I found these little canvases. A lot of times when you buy a canvas, it has that wooden frame all the way around it. Now, the Dollar Tree did have some larger ones like this, of this type of format, and it had the wood frame around it. But I thought, this just came two in a pack for a dollar. Well, I'm getting two instead of one. Let me grab these little ones, and maybe I can come up with some type of a project to go with it. Now, if you don't have a Dollar Tree in your area, you can always pick up canvases at Michael's or Joann's, a Walmart, an art supply store. You can buy them online at Amazon. There's plenty of places to find canvases that are stretched across that wooden frame. I like these because they were nice and flat, and I was thinking that you could do something with them and hang them on a wall, or they have those little tiny easels, the art easels. You can always put it into the art easel and have that as a decoration. You know, you can prop it up anywhere. You can do whatever you want. You can put them together as a series if you do more than just one design of something. So the creativity to go with these is just enormous. There's so many things you can do. You can paint on them. You can draw on them. There's things like whatever you possibly could think of. As I always say, if you don't know what to do with something, give it to a child and they'll show you what to do. Children's creativity is never blocked. It's always great and they're always coming up with something. But I'd seen on Pinterest several years ago about decoupaging fabric onto these. So I thought that's what we would do today. With the holidays coming up, with Christmas being just right around the corner, we are into August, almost September now. I thought I'd seen this one quilt that had green strips that would go from one width down to a narrower width. And they went across like this with a little yellow on the top for a Christmas tree. And it was a wall hanging. So I thought, well, that would be really fun to do on one of these little things. So I've got my canvas that I'm going to use. I grabbed a whole bunch of green fabrics. I'm going to use Mod Podge. Now, when you're at the Dollar Tree in the craft section, they do have these little bottles for a dollar. They're both, this one's a matte finish. This one I got from my daughter that she was no longer using. Once again, it's a matte finish. You might want to check out a gloss one if you want a nice shine to it. And if you just want a matte finish, then these are great. Also at the Dollar Tree, they've got foam brushes, foam paint brushes. Your kids could always do it right with their fingers if they're little. I would watch smaller children because kids in glue, you know, they tend to make it into their mouth. So if they're using their fingers. But as a grown adult crafter, I'm going to use this foam brush at least to start with because let's face it, somehow my fingers are going to get into it and I'm going to use them somehow and make a mess. I have an old cutting mat that I could just go right onto it, but I don't want to get glue on it because I still use it for cutting felt and batting and such. So I put some paper down. This paper came with a package I ordered either from Amazon or Walmart. If you order things in the mail through Walmart, I tend to order cat food and dog food. So my store doesn't always carry what I want. So I just order it from online and it comes to the house. I don't have to lift the dog food. The mailman carries it right up to the door for me. It's wonderful. But they tend to pack it up with a bunch of this brown paper or off-white tan paper. It seems depending on what you're ordering what kind of paper you get but i thought this would be great to put down i have it taped down with some cheap old dollar tree uh <laughs> blue tape that is not masking tape that is not holding very well but it's okay if we make a mess we make a mess i have decided to cut my pieces with a rotary cutter and my little i have a little four and a half inch ruler that i'm using because it's only small pieces but you can tear it, you can cut it with scissors, you can rough cut it any way you want. But I was thinking for the Christmas tree, I wanted actual rectangles and I wanted to cut off any of the little fuzzies that come off the edge, the little threads. And I want to try to make it sort of kind of even and look halfway decent. Now with my greens, I wanted some things that red green. So even though this is a good a winter Christmassy thing with the snowman, this is more about the white than the green. So I did not choose this guy. 
I also had the green camo because, you know, it's green, but I thought that was just going to be too dark for what I wanted. I wanted some nice, fun, bright colors. So I grabbed these greens. I also had this in my scrap bin. Let me show you what I have. I have an old animal cracker container where I put a whole bunch of little bits of scraps that weren't going into my scrap system where I cut everything at one and a half, two, two and a half, et cetera, et cetera widths. This is, I was thinking more for a ticker tape quilt where you just sew little pieces of scraps of fabric down and let me see if I can put a link to one of the videos I've made on that. But I pulled most of these fabrics out of there because they're odd cuts. They're just random scraps. We're not using very long pieces, so this would work well. So anywhere you can find some green fabric, even if you have to go into your stash and grab a yard and just cut a little piece off, I won't tell. Nobody's going to notice. But this was some of the fabric that I found in there. Now this came out of, I believe, at one point I was picking up the crib bumpers you know the little pads that go around a crib that you're not supposed to use anymore because kids can get their face stuck and suffocate i was taking those apart to get the the little designs that they had on them because they're all so cute and i was turning those into quilts but this was a piece that i pulled off probably from one of the ties now you can see it's permanently it's got their creases and stitched but this whole section right in the center there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a nice solid green, so I'm going to cut around here. I'm only going to use a piece of fabric that's maybe a half of an inch wide, maybe three quarters of an inch, so it's not going to matter with these edges. We are really talking about bottom of the barrel scraps here today. I also grabbed a yellow for the top. Now this one is a bit of an orangey yellow, but I thought that kind of looks like a bit of a star. But then I came across this fabric. Now you're gonna say, hey, uh, how are you gonna get that? Cause that's got all these, all these different colors in it. But at the very top, it's not gonna be a very big piece. And I could easily just use a piece of yellow straight from there. So don't go past the piece of fabric because it has too many colors in it, too much design, too much going on. You might be able to just cut a little section out and use that. Now I'm not gonna use this for the green or anything cause it's too yellow, but it's a frog's foot. It's kind of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and get this for my star, I believe, because I like how, how bright this is compared to this more of a dull orange color. Now for my tree, I want to start towards the bottom here, and I want it to go up, and I want it to be wider at the bottom and darker, so as we get up towards the shiny star on the top, that the greens are going to get lighter in color. So I'll just go through and I'll figure out what do I think is my darkest color that I'm going to use. See, I even have this one with uh, the different branches and the, the little pine needles or whatever on it, but it still feels quite green, so I thought that that would work. But I think I'm going to use this as my darkest green. As you see, it doesn't take very many pieces. I don't think I want to have the polka dot down at the bottom to hold it off, because I want this to, to be the main anchor at the bottom, so I think I'm going to use this. And as you can see, it already tapers down to the edge. So I'm just going to get my rotary cutter and my ruler. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, before we do any decoupaging on this at all, I'm going to go ahead and cut out all my pieces and lay it out to see what it looks like. And then I'll go through and I'll glue everything down. So I figure I'm going to want a piece I can measure with my ruler. Let's say I want my bottom piece to start out. Maybe we'll do three and a half inches. That'll give me... See, these are five inch pieces by, it's a five by seven piece of canvas. So I don't want my fabric to be right at the edge. I like to have a little white space around it. So I think I'm gonna cut my first one at maybe three and a half inches. So I went ahead and cut mine by three and a half inches long by only about a half an inch wide because I decided I wanted to have more greens going up for my tree. If you only want to put three or four pieces in, you can go ahead and cut your pieces wider, maybe three quarters of an inch. But I want to see how many greens I can get in there and use a variety of fabrics and kind of fill the space. If you want more of a plain background space, then go ahead and use wider fabric so you're only using a few. So if that's three and a half inches, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my next green by two and a half inches and just see what it looks like in comparison on how it's going to be narrowing up towards the top. 
I can lay my piece out to see if I want to go next to it. I do have the leftover pieces here, so I can just go ahead like this and maybe decide on how I want it to where I want it. I might not want to use that polka dot at all. It does seem to stick out a bit. As I can see, there's not too much of a gradation in here. You can always do that trick where you lay out your fabrics and take a black and white photo and see if you can see how they adjust. And that way you're not seeing the color saturation. You're just seeing the black and whiteness, the, the shades and stuff. So you can see if you're progressing from a darker to a lighter and adjust it. But this is just going to be something fun that I'm going to hang up in my craft room. So I'm just going to go ahead and guess it with an eyeball it and see where I want to put things. So I'm just going to lay them down randomly and then I can move things around. Here's my star at the top. I do have a couple pieces I cut out previously. This one is actually from a green balloon. And once again, if you trim around it and you just get a nice small piece, you're going to be able to use it because you're not going to see that it's a balloon. I wouldn't even be able to guess that if I didn't know that that was what the fabric was. And this is some of that grassy tree fabric that I've been using in the baby quilts lately. I think that's a nice light color to go towards the top. We can really overthink this and just play around with it a lot. But a lot of times it's just better to just go ahead and get in there and whack it off. I think maybe I will put this one next because this one feels like it's a little bit darker. Put that at the bottom. So we decided we're going to cut this one at two and a half inches and I'm still going to stick with the half inch. I'm just over here to the side cutting everything on. I have a regular, my regular cutting mat is underneath this one. So I'm just off to the side. So I cut that one at two and a half inches by our half inch width. And I think, I think that'll be okay. Let me put this one here. This one's just a little bit longer. I think I might, hmm. Let me cut one of these three inches long and we'll see what that looks like. If you're going to mass produce these, once you figure out if you wanna make like four or five of them for the family, once you figure out the first one, it's really easy to figure out the rest or just make one and make the next one something different. You could put a snowman on here Okay, let's see what this looks like with three inches. And then that's what it looked like if we go to the next one with two and a half. I think, you know, decisions, decisions, right? I think I kind of like it with just a little bit going in on the side. I want them to have my Christmas tree nice and full. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just go so we did this one at three and a half and this one at three. Maybe we'll just skip a half inch and go up. We can go down and skip three quarters of an inch if we like, but I think I like it with just the half inch for right now. I could always make another one, right? So that was just a tester. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this ferny looking stuff. So just double check you were at three. So now we're gonna go at two and a half. And when you're working with scraps at this size, I still have extra left over. Here's the half inch one that I plan on using. So I have that extra bit left over. I could have gone ahead and ironed this ahead of time if I wanted, but I think it'll just go ahead and take care of itself when I work on decoupaging it down. So we started at three and a half, we went down to three, and now we're at two and a half. So we're gonna go down to two inches and My balloon has already cut it two inches, so I'm just gonna trim that down to a half an inch. I'd started them out at three quarters of an inch, but I really didn't care for that that much. Now with that little yellow in the center of the balloon, it looks like maybe my star reflected onto that. See how I'm gradually going into the yellow greens? That's kind of interesting how it automatically, that's what I've been grabbing. I think that's gonna look nice there. So once again, because I can't remember numbers, that's two. We're going to go down to an inch and a half. If you're working with children on this, you can go ahead and cut everything ahead of time and let them just choose the fabrics they want. In what order? Give them a variety to play with. And since that was an inch and a half, I think I'm going to do an inch square for my star and see what that looks like. Okay. 
I think using the full inch is a little bit much. Let me trim that down to three quarters of an inch. You can always sketch this out ahead of time on paper if you'd like. So let's see, do I think I want my star to be that much wider and larger? Hmm. I think it works fine like that, but I am going to trim it down just a smidgen more. This is an inch. I think I'm going to go down to three quarters of an inch just so it stands out against that green. Now I can add some more. I can space this out however I want. I can measure it to make sure I have each individual layer of my rows of green are spaced a half an inch in between or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet, but we'll find out when we start going. And give ourselves a nice little bit amount of space or we can keep it close together. And then do we need a tree trunk? I do have this nice dark brown batik that I can make a little tree trunk out of. I'd say three quarters of an inch for that one also. That's a bit too long. This is just one of those projects that you can just play until you get it to the way you like it, to what looks good for your eye. See, now we got a nice little tree there. I think this would be really fun as a little decoration on a table or as I said, to hang on a wall. I think it's a little bit big for a Christmas tree ornament such, but if you find any canvases that are smaller, you could do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and decoupage this. But if you don't want a straight white background, you can either paint the background. Maybe you want this to be uh, maybe some blue for a starry night sky. Or if you want to stick with the red and green for Christmas, you could put it red back there. You could put a piece of fabric on the back you know, as your background and then build your tree on top of it. Whatever works for you. I'm going to go with the stark white on the back because I want to have that contrast. But I think I might want to measure a little bit before I put these things in. And then I'm going to use a mechanical pencil and make little registration marks that I'm going to cover up with the fabric. But that way I can see if I can get them lined up nicely. I'm going to turn it sideways. You get a bit of a larger ruler here so it covers the whole five inches. So two and a half inches, of course, is half of five. And this is three quarters of an inch, so let me kind of put it quarter inch up from the bottom, kind of center this a little bit. Put a little, just the littlest of a mark so I know that this is where I want it to go. Then let's see if I turn this over because this ruler is six and a half inches. I have the quarter inch and a half inch that I can use to guide myself. And because once again, it's a quilting ruler, I can line up the bottom, which seems to be pretty straight on here. And I can use this as I'm decoupaging things down if I want. I just have to be careful and clean my ruler afterwards. But if I have my piece of trunk there what would happen if I moved everything up a quarter of an inch from that spot? You see, I'm just putting a quarter of an inch. I'm just lining my quarter of an inch line on top of my fabric. And I'm taking my next piece and laying it just at the top of my ruler. I'm just eyeballing it on the sides. I don't need to be perfect. I figure once I get my trunk about centered, then the rest of it will kind of sort of fall into place. For me, as you guys know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. This is just something fun to play with. I want to make sure if using a quarter inch that I'm not going to run out of canvas by the time I get to my star. Using the quarter inch worked out really well, but I don't have a good balance between where my trunk is at the bottom, which I feel like it needs to be towards the bottom so it's not floating in space. But I have all this extra space up top. I have about a full inch up at the top. So let's go ahead and try it at a half an inch. Yes, I know this is a lot of rambling and talking and we're just kind of messing around here, but this is the basic process 
that I go through when I'm doing these things. I'm sure you guys might come up with something different and streamline it a little bit better. And remember when you're doing this that fabric has two sides that if you have a dark green and you want a light green, you can always flip it over to the other side and use that in a different section of your tree. Now see if we go a half inch, we are going to run out of room and not have a spot for our star. I do like the way it's separated, but I think it's just a little bit too much. So we are going to go with my original craziness and we are just going to lay it down. And however everything works out, that's how it's going to work out. And it's going to be fine. Turn my star up that way if I want. Do we like the star up that way? Or do we like it linear like this? I think we're going to go with that, and I think when we start, we'll put our trunk a little bit higher up off the ground, not too high. Maybe we'll go a full half inch off there, and then we'll just build it on the way up. So let's move these to the side. I don't want to lose my order. You could take a picture. Shake my uh, Mod Podge up really well. I'm sure that's going to create bubbles and that's going to be a problem so you can stir it, but live on the wild side, right? This is not, fabric is my medium, the decoupage isn't. I'm just stepping into some other crafter's area and I know there's lots of rules that I'm probably going to break and things aren't going to be done right. But you know what? It's okay because I'm just going to do this once or twice and have a little fun with it and then move on to the next project. You just pour some into the lid so maybe it might be easier to work with. I don't know. And then move the bottle far out of the way so I don't spill it. Now, from what I understand and what I've watched with the decoupage videos and such, let me get rid of my pencil mark just in case something weird happens. I can still see the shadow of it. Is we are going to use this as a glue on the base. And that if you go crazy with your brushes, you're going to see the brush strokes. We are using a foam. It's got fuzzies on it. We're using this little foam paintbrush. I don't know how that's going to affect it. But once again, willy nilly, if it has a little bit of a texture to it, then I'm okay with it. Because this canvas, it's like crosshatch. You can see marks going this way and this way. And however it's made and stuff, it's already got texture. It's not smooth. So I'm not going to worry about brush strokes. If brush strokes and things like that bother you, then I highly suggest that you watch some type of YouTube video that knows what they're talking about, knows what they're doing, and they can teach you the proper way. Me, we're just winging it today. So if you decide to give this to the grandkids or the children or the scout troop or the church group, the cousins, nieces and nephews, they're not going to be all perfect and they're not going to make sure that there's no bubbles or anything like that. Let me guesstimate my half inch here. This is a batik so it doesn't matter if it's right side up or not. I'm going to use my pencil to move things around. See this is where I say you could probably get your fingers into it. So I'm going to try to be careful to start with. Put that there. Here's a nifty little trick. If you have two, you can go ahead and kind of figure out your spacing on the extra one. And this could be your example for all future ones if you make extra trees. And if you have it sitting next to you, you'll know, okay, I need to bring this one over right to here. If something happens, this decoupage glue on the bottom, the Mod Podge, it's still flexible. I can peel the fabric off and move it around a little bit. Fingers crossed, as far as I understand, that's what it's going to be able to do. Put this one a little bit closer to the trunk because I feel like the tree trunk should be close, right? As you can see, I am putting the Mod Podge past where our tree is going to be. I figure that way it's got total coverage everywhere. 
because once we put another coating on top is what's going to seal everything, it's going to go everywhere anyway. I'm just guesstimating. It looks like I might have been gone back to using, yeah, but I went back to using the quarter inch space. So let's test out my theory. Let's see if we can go ahead and lift this up. You could use a pin. There, look, he's not stuck. I'll move him up just a little bit more. I can bring my ruler over and kind of eyeball it a little bit. Want less than a half an inch, more than a quarter. It's just a fun little project. I'm not going to stress over it and have it exact. If I have a problem at the top, maybe I can put a Christmas banner on it or write um, a Christmas tree or some type of thing. I could put, I could put a frame around this and frame it with ribbon or something, and that would eat up that extra space up top. If you guys have been here long enough, you know while I care about doing things the right way or the best way and getting the project done to where it's going to be usable in the process, I just kind of want to have fun. I could also put the year up top. I could put, I could put my last name. I could put Lalone up there. I could put my kid's name if I was giving it as a gift. Maybe if I was making something for a baby for their baby's first Christmas. I really kind of like the idea of putting the year up top. There, I think that came out kind of cute. It does have space up top, a little bit less. I added a little down there. I kind of like that extra space down there. They're reasonably, this one might be a little closer than the rest, but they're all reasonable. So the next thing you're gonna do is Give yourself a little bit more Mod Podge if needed. We're gonna put a coat on top and that's going to seal the fabric down. The Mod Podge on the bottom is holding it in place and securing it and then this is gonna put a coat on top and it's supposed to protect it kinda of, sorta of from, I don't know if I wanna put a glass on it but if a little bit of a, a spill of something got on it, you should be able to wipe it off from what I understand. If any of you guys are professional Mod Podge fanatics, just go ahead and leave a comment down below for the rest of us so we can learn. I've decided I'm just gonna dab this a little cause it'll keep the fabric from moving when I put my first bit down. And then let's see, yep, see that worked pretty good. Whoop. Be gentle, make sure your edges are all sealed down you can add more coats after this dries. I will probably add a second or third coat to it. This first section down here has already started to dry. These little threads are a no-no, so let's see if I can... Probably grabbed the wrong type of tweezers for it. Okay, here we go. This is where we get in trouble. Grab it up with your fingernail. See, I told you my hands were going to get into it somewhere. See, that's the only issue I have is with all these different threads. Maybe I'll just push them back into the fabric. Okay, see, if I just take my finger, well, now this one's an extra one. He can come off. Everything's still wet. But see these down here? If I just run my finger along it, they will go right back up into the fabric and they'll be touching the fabric and they won't fray around the edge. If you have one of the rotary cutters that have the scallop or the design to them, you can always try that. I don't know how well it'll work on a small piece of fabric like this. There we go. The little threads are just coming off everywhere. At this point, you could always add some type of a sparkle to it. A little bit of glitter for the snow coming down on the tree out in the forest. Mm -hmm. 
use my brush to try to keep everything under control. And this paper is good if you got extra. I've got all those fibers stuck to my brush. I'll just brush it right off on there. All right. Stop going that way and we won't have that problem, right? Okay, so there's my coating down. Let me go through, just run my finger along there, run a pin along there if you have it, or a stylus, knitting needle. Or consider it just a little bit rougher and that it's going to have that. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. I mean, it, it's a matte finish, so you really can't tell. It's no shininess or anything. It is dry to the touch. The fabric, fabric feels like it's absorbed a lot of the glue, so it's a little bit damp still. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer before I go ahead and put a final coat on this, but I wanna get this video out to you guys. So now that you have this done, what are you gonna do with it? You can go ahead and glue a ribbon onto the back. I probably, you could use a decoupage, the Mod Podge, and it would hold it, but I would probably maybe put a little hot glue on there and hold it in. And then you can have a nice little ribbon and hang it up in the house somewhere. You can use any type of the command products, the posters and the strips and stuff just to hang it on the wall. You can prop it up against somewhere on your little side table with all your Christmas stuff. Maybe put it up by a bowl or something. You could put it they have, like I said, they have those little easels you can set it in. It might be a little bit large for an easel, but you can get, you can get some type of, um, they show you, there's different videos where they show you, you can put a piece of cardboard and make the stand like you would have on the back of a picture frame. You could always take it off the back of a cheap Dollar Tree picture frame. You could put it in a Dollar Tree cheap picture, picture frame and hang it on the wall that way. But I think I'm just going to use some type of a command product to hold it that way and hang it up on the wall. It's a nice little decoration that'll be add a little touch of winter and Christmas to a room without it screaming ho ho ho, which you could put on here somewhere. But that's it. There's plenty of things you guys can do with this. Enjoy the creativity. Have a little fun. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.